A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Over the years, some have assumed, as a result of the rabbi's approach to Jewish practice and custom, that the rabbi is Sephardic or Yemenite. Is this indeed the case? It actually uh, is quite amusing to me to know, and I have become aware over the years, that it is the case that quite a few people assume that I am either Sephardi or Temani, when in fact uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Both my parents uh, are or were Ashkenazi, that is to say, my mother, Alea Shalom, was born near the city of Lvov, uh, at that time in Poland, nowadays part of Ukraine. And uh, my father, may he be well, was born in uh, the area on the border between Romania and Hungary, known as Transylvania. In other words, both uh, absolutely 100% Ashkenazi Jews, and that was my upbringing. I was brought up in an Ashkenazi home with Ashkenazi uh, minhagim customs, practices. I was brought up davening Nusach Ashkenaz. That was the kind of tefillah that I was familiar with. In fact, that was the only kind of tefillah with which I was familiar. Uh, and this is also uh, this was true of the of the Jewish day school I went to as a young boy in Australia. So in terms of my upbringing, in, and certainly up until the time that I uh, moved to Israel permanently at the age of almost 17, I lived in an exclusively Ashkenazi environment. How did the rabbi become familiar with Sephardic and Yemenite practices? Well, in fact, this was a, a long and uh, not necessarily simple uh, evolutionary process. It began when I was uh, 17, I was studying a certain yeshiva, and uh, behind me every day in the morning, Tifilat Shaharit, the, uh, the young man who sat behind me was a Sephardi, and he had a very pronounced uh, ayin and heth in his repertoire of pronunciation, and I simply heard that he was pronouncing these letters in a way that uh, I had never heard pronounced before. I, I was brought up, uh, I was taught uh, in school uh, what is called uh, modern Israeli pronunciation, which is in fact neither Sfaradi nor Ashkenazi, as I've mentioned elsewhere. And uh, I was taught explicitly, for example, that there is no difference between an Aleph and an Ayin, I delib deliberately mispronounce it right now, or between a, a Chaf and a Chet, so I was told. Uh, again, mi mispronounced, and uh, I, it never really occurred to me that there should be a difference. And all of a sudden I heard there was, there was this new, these two new letters in the Hebrew language with which I was quite unfamiliar. And I asked some of the uh, people in the yeshiva, I asked some of the rabbis, all of whom I should mention were Ashkenazim uh, about this pronunciation and where does it come from and what's it based on and they said to me all of them yes uh, it's true this is uh, everyone knows this is how these letters should be pronounced and when I asked well why doesn't everyone pronounce it this way I got uh, rather blank stares and uh, not very clear answers but the best answer that I heard was that well it should be that way but we've uh, forgotten how to do it we don't know how to do it it's, it's very difficult to do if you weren't brought up that way uh, so I tested that theory by simply trying to uh, emulate what I was hearing and uh, I must tell you that within a few days I was quite successfully pronouncing both the Ayn and the Heth and I didn't find it very difficult at all. So at least in my own mind I had debunked that claim that if you hadn't been brought up with it it's very difficult. I don't believe it's difficult for the vast majority of people. I think that it is all a question of will. If you wish to do so, you will almost certainly uh, succeed in doing so. Where there is a will, there is a way. And many years later, I, uh, by chance as it were, although we know that such things do not occur by chance, 
I met a, a very interesting individual, a great Tamil Hachamim, uh, by the name of Rabbi Ben Sion Kohen, originally from Jerba, an island off Tunisia. And he was a great Tamil Hachamim, and uh, obviously very Sfaradi, and a uh, great expert in Hebrew language and grammar, diktuk, etc. And from him I learned uh, all about the, the truth uh, of uh, Ashuna Kodesh, of uh, the Holy Tongue, Hebrew. That, that is at least is with regards to uh, pronunciation. That, that is how I uh, ended up pronouncing Hebrew as, as I do, as it should be uh, pronounced, as it should be pronounced to the best of my knowledge. And of course, when one begins to learn and appreciate these things, one uh, understands that the claim that we hear from certain circles, that, that we must all follow our father's traditions or our grandfather's traditions, because uh, that is the only thing we have to go upon. We have the, what they call the, usually the Mesoira or the Mesoira or what have you, uh, meaning tradition, and that we have an accurate tradition, a reliable tradition, and they often will quote uh, the ne by name a certain great rabbi or certain great rabbanim who pronounced things, shall we say, with regards to pronunciation at least, who pronounced things in a certain way, as if this fact alone proves that that pronunciation is correct, when one begins to understand that it is not so, then one uh, begins to understand and internalize that when it comes to, to a true Torah tradition, Masora, in pr correctly pronounced, uh, it is possible on many issues, not all issues, but on many issues, it is possible to discover uh, the true and authentic Torah tradition, the Masorah, but one has to know where to look, and it is uh, not the, the claim, the convenient claim, that the truth will always be found in what, one, what one's father or grandfather did, is, un is unfortunately not true, and one has to often look much further afield. And whilst we're on the topic with regards to pronunciation, the facts of the matter are that no particular a group within the Jewish people, not the Ashkenazim, nor the Temmanim, nor the Sfaradim, have maintained the precise and authentic pronunciation of Hebrew completely in its entirety. There are some elements of the truth to be found in all of these traditions, and of course it is a question of, uh, of knowing where to look for the correct pronunciation or the correct tradition re regarding this or that detail or facet of the language, that allows one to reconstruct the correct pronunciation, which it is true in many aspects is, is more in line with the uh, pronunciation of the Yemenites, but not, not entirely so. That is with regards to pronunciation. What about other issues other than pronunciation? Many people have been taught that they must follow the halachic practice of their father or grandfather uh, simply because that is, that is how the Torah works. If your father or grandfather uh, acted in accordance with a certain halachic view, then th you must do the same. And the more I began to think about this, and the more I researched uh, this matter and delved into it, the more obvious it became that this is clearly incorrect, and in fact, uh, completely spurious. It cannot possibly be the case that one must do that which one knows to be incorrect, or to be dubious, simply because one's father or grandfather or great-grandfather happened to act in such a matter. This in no way uh, intends to cast any aspersion with, reg uh, with regards to one's ancestors, but uh, this has nothing to do with the truth. The truth does not necessarily uh, work in this world in such a fashion. And the more I looked into it, the more I discovered that many posikim, many hachamim, uh, relate to the Torah in such a fashion. They do not believe that one must follow a particular position simply because that is what one's family or one's friends or one's neighbors are used to doing. What therefore in your view should be the guiding principle of a Torah Jew? To my mind there is no question. The guiding principle of any Torah Jew who takes his Judaism and takes the Torah seriously should be truth that which is true, very simple, very straightforward. Hazal tell us in a number of places, for example, in the Talmud Bavli, Shabbat Afnun Hey, 
Hotamo shana kadosh baruchu emeth, the seal of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, his signature, as it were, were, is the truth. That is the sign, and that is the logo of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the truth. And the person who wishes to connect to Hashem, therefore, needs to connect to the truth, not to preconceived notions and not to all kinds of uh, affiliations or or pressures, social and other pressures, but rather to put the truth above all things. And this is the unique quality which we find in Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was brought up in a place and in a, in a time where everyone believed in certain ideas regarding God or gods and how to worship them and what was correct and what was incorrect. And what was special about Avram Avinu, Avram Ha'ivri, uh, was that he was willing to question and he was willing to deviate from what uh, his father and his neighbors and everyone in his city and his country at the time thought and did. He was willing to question and he was willing to act upon what he knew to be true. And that is the essence, that is the founding principle of Torah Judaism. So does the rabbi define himself as Ashkenazic, Sephardic, Yemenite, or none of the above? For me, the answer must be none of the above. Not because uh, there's anything wrong with any of those labels, quite the opposite. I love all Jews equally. I have no favoritism. I like Ashkenazi Jews and Temani Jews and Sephardi Jews, and there is what to be learned from all of these uh, traditions and practices and customs. When it comes to deciding halakha, specifically halakha, the only guiding principle must be the truth. And when it comes to everything else, which is not purely halakhic in nature, then one or two can choose that which is, seems more uh, appropriate, more relevant, that which speaks to you. Uh, for instance, if an Ashkenazi Jew prefers to daven in a Sfaradi shul, or vice versa. Uh, that is perfectly all right. That is how, that's, that's how it should be. A person should go and do what he finds meaningful and, and correct uh, within the framework of uh, halachic Torah Judaism. And there's nothing wrong with that. Quite the opposite. That is exactly how, how things should be. And I do not find uh, myself under any pressure to identify with this group or that group. I do not see myself as an Ashkenazi or, or a Temani or a Sfaradi. I see myself as a Jew living in Eretz Yisrael in a very particular, very special period of our history where Jews from all over the world, from over a hundred countries, have returned to our ancestral homeland and we can once again get to know each other and get to learn from each other and experience the beautiful aspects and the, the things which are correct uh, more correct perhaps in someone else's tradition than in our own. We, we can become reacquainted with ancient traditions and uh, true and objectively factual aspects of our Judaism. And that is a very wonderful and beautiful thing. And that is how it should be. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.